Today I'm reacting to your Monday Night Raw hot take. Hot takes is a weekly video series where I give you all a platform to be able to voice your thoughts, whether they're good thoughts, bad thoughts, or everything in between about the world of professional wrestling. So if you'd like to be featured in the next episode of Hot Takes, make sure that you follow me on X because I ask for your hot take after every episode of Raw, SmackDown, and every WWE Premium Live event. That means that we're going to be doing an episode of Hot Takes right after Saturday night's main event as well, so make sure that you drop me that follow. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to this channel ring the bell for notifications if you're a wrestling fan i'm confident that you're going to fall in love with his youtube channel because we always upload daily wrestling content even when we're on vacation although the vacation's almost over i will be back in my studio setup on december 18th but for now you're going to need to keep looking at this bland wall for a little while longer and hey if you want even more than just daily content here on youtube don't forget the patreon patreon.com slash santi's app over there we upload so much more content that never gets uploaded to youtube so go check it out i'm confident that you'll like it if you give it even just one month patreon.com slash santi's app link in the description link in the pinned comment let's read your stupid shit if anyone else won't say it then i will this is the best that the new day has looked in five plus years the amount of heat that they are generating after what they did to Big E is amazing and it's way better than what we all thought was the original plan together as heels is way better than splitting them up so i think that i speak for everybody when i say that we're just happy that both xavier woods and kofi kingston are getting true genuine loud reactions from the wwe universe i just don't think that me you and everyone else thought that this loud crowd reaction was going to be the loudest chorus of boos that i've heard in the wwe in a long time this is louder than what i I've heard Dominic Mysterio get during the height of the Boo Dominic Mysterio movement. I also agree with you when saying that together as heels is better than splitting them up. I'm going to be honest with you, splitting them up I don't think would have been the right choice. The WWE's mid-card and main event scene is already stacked. However, there is room for growth and a lot of growth right now in the WWE tag team division and using this new version of the New Day as a cornerstone of a tag team division that desperately needs to be built is brilliant and I think that is where they're going to fit best. Overall, I'm just happy that the New Day has something brand new to do. Something that doesn't have to rely on when Big E is going to come back. The utter verbal and soul destruction of Big E was necessary to get what we're getting right now, which is Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston making an actual meaningful run in the WWE. Finn Balor will unfortunately never feel like a credible main eventer again, even after standing tall over Gunther two weeks in a row. And it's all due to the priest match at Bad Blood. That match did irreversible damage to him. So I kind of agree with your point about the Bad Blood match. Ever since he lost that match at Bad Blood, I said, I'm done with Finn Balor and anything related to, with him and Damian Priest. Damian Priest won that feud as far as concerned, and I'm ready to move on. So them continuing to hit on this storyline and now bringing Gunther into it frankly has me kind of uninterested in both the Damien and Finn feud and kind of uninterested in the current feud that the world heavyweight champion Gunther is in. This isn't doing Gunther any favors, unfortunately. I do believe that down the line that Finn Balor should get the Shinsuke Nakamura treatment, which is to go from irrelevant to champion in the snap of a finger. I just don't think that this is the right moment <laughs> that, that, that this, they should pull the trigger on this. They, it's just not the right moment because right now this is not a Gunther feud this is Damien and Finn featuring Gunther and that's just not the right way to go about a Finn Balor world championship push right now I am in the minority but I do not want this to happen at Mania at all Liv wasn't even on the Mania 40 card since then she's become one of the fastest rising stars and top merch sellers in the division snubbing her of a Mania match twice in a row would be a disservice to her yeah you are <laughs> totally 100% in the minority I and many people absolutely want to see Rhea Ripley versus EO Sky because that is the dream match right now that's left on Monday Night Raw. I've seen EO and Liv. I've seen uh, Liv and Rhea Ripley countless times. We have to eventually move on from this feud and the match, the money match right now is Rhea Ripley versus EO Sky. And that's not to say that just because this is the world championship match that all of a sudden Liv Morgan gets left off the card. There's other players that could eventually be involved to help elevate Liv Morgan into a major non-title feud as well and I don't think that Liv Morgan needs elevating I think she herself can do the elevating as well 
Liv Morgan has really stepped up her game where she doesn't need to be piggybacked by a World Heavyweight Championship in order to be featured at WrestleMania. I feel like that's actually doing Liv Morgan a disservice to think that the only way she gets to Mania is by feuding with Rhea Ripley and with the World Heavyweight title. She is so much more than just Rhea and the World title as an identity as a wrestler. Sooner or later, Dominic is going to reach his limit with Finn, and he's going to snap on him. From calling him a, quote, kid last week to saying that he didn't deserve a match against Gunther tonight. Crashed out Dom is coming. So I kind of think that you're right. I wouldn't be surprised if Dominic Mysterio costs both Damian Priest and Finn Balor the championship match. Thus, again, continuing the feud between Finn Balor and Damian Priest and, of course, Finn Balor and now Dominic Mysterio, but also leaving Gunther once again with a championship victory that he didn't earn, continuing to create the spiral of the ring general. I like this idea. I would not be surprised if it gets executed as early as Saturday night's main event. It's amazing how we're potentially getting a heel McIntyre, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins feuding against a babyface OG bloodline. Crazy how things change after just one year. I think it's kind of crazy to think about just how many storylines right now, the bloodline and Roman Reigns specifically are impacting, right? We're talking about the feud between Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens. That feud exists exist because of the existence of Roman Reigns. The feud between Seth Rollins and CM Punk, that feud was fueled because of the existence of Roman Reigns and CM Punk teaming with Roman Reigns. Then we have everything that's going on with Jay, Sami Zayn, and Drew McIntyre that's also been fueled by the existence of the bloodline and Roman Reigns. It just goes to show the reach that the tribal chief just has in terms of having his hand in the cookie jar of major feuds across the WWE when he isn't part of those feuds. And in some of those cases, he doesn't even work on the same nights that those feuds are happening in. If the Judgment Day retains the tag titles again next week, then I will officially lose hope in Triple H's ability to book a good tag team division. So I already don't have very good hopes about Triple H's ability to book a good tag team division, but I think that they're making good strides based on what we've seen with DIY, based on what we've seen with, uh, with, with the New Day recently, what we saw with the Bloodline when they became tag champions, the Motor City Machine Gun stuff, the return of the War Raiders. So there is evidence to say that they're going in the right direction. Okay. However, there's more evidence to say that Triple H sucks at booking the tag team division as well, as we've seen for the last several years. If the War Raiders do not win this, I'm going to cry. Please, please take the tight tag titles off of the Judgment Day as soon as freaking possible. Gunther is like the third wheel in this feud between Damien and Finn. However, the reason why his IC title reign in 2023 and Seth's world title reign were effective was because they had an extra hour to have matches and multiple backstage segments on weekly TV. Yeah, but I don't think that that damages just storytelling of the world titles, but I do think that it's a bit more prevalent and noticeable when it comes to the booking of the world titles and the intercontinental title right now that gets featured what seemingly feels like every every other week when it used to be featured every single week on Monday Night Raw. This is a temporary issue, as we know. As we go to Netflix, we're going to get more time, less commercial breaks, etc. But I do agree with what you're saying initially, that Gunther does feel like the third wheel in this feud between Finn and Damien, which is a disservice to everyone involved because it just sort of feels like the world heavyweight title in this is just a prop not necessarily something for Finn and Damien to actually chase. Tonight was proved that the New Day, Turkey, is one of the greatest tag teams of all time. I'm assuming you meant truly, but I prefer to read it out as Turkey. We all know that they are able to play great faces, but the heat that they're getting tonight, my God, it takes a special team to be able to be so loved and then be so hated. I agree. It is a rare thing to be able to go from these complete polar opposites and the New Day have done it before. It's just that people tend to forget that they initially started in the WWE as hilarious, despicable heels that got ridiculous heat from the WWE universe, but they were so good at their job that they eventually became baby faces. I don't see how they can be this good as heels and then be that good to turn baby faces. I just don't think that this character arc that they're on today could lead to a natural baby face turn unless they somehow make up with Big E. This is brand new while also being in the wheelhouse of the New Day because they've played heels before. But this, this is a brand new type of heel, not just a brand new type of heel for the New Day, but just a brand new type of heel in general. This isn't the traditional, I changed my music, I changed my attire, and I attacked a babyface heel. They haven't done any of those things. They've not done any of the 
typical physical manifestations of a heel turn. They still have, as far as I know, the same attire, the same music, and they never attacked Big E. And yet they're still getting the nuclear heat that they got on Monday Night Raw. And to me, that is so special. Wyatt Six losing was a horrible decision and making Bo eat the pin feels far too early and big to happen on a random episode of Raw. I was caught off guard by it. I won't lie. I was not expecting the Wyatt Six to lose, but I'm okay with the Wyatt Six losing. Honestly, I feel like getting this loss out of the way removes that like unstoppable aura that the Wyatt Six kind of had during their feud with American Maid that kind of made it obvious that Wyatt Six was going to win every single match that they're in. Now that that loss is out of the way, every match and every feud that they're in can actually be a toss up. You won't know who's going to win. And I think that that's great. I feel like a loss also brings this group into a realm of humanization, which I think they really, really needed as well. I still think that they're ultimately going to win the feud, but I don't think that this is like the burial of the Wyatt Six that so many people think that it is. Sammy, run from the taser, Sammy. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, dude, look at this. Good God. Before, what a debut, oh. what a debut. <laughs> that was a sneak peek of this week's Wrestling is Cool Match Club available exclusively on Patreon.com slash Santi's app. This week, we're looking at the ridiculous WrestleMania 38 match between Sami Zayn and Johnny Knoxville in an Anything Goes match. We're looking at a wild intergender match between Penta El Zero Miedo versus Io Sky in Lucha Underground. We're looking at the short but awesome match between Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe at Great Balls of Fire. What a dumb name for a show. We're also going to be watching the Big Boom AJ Costco guys match that he just had at AEW Full Gears pre-show. And we're looking back at the debut of The Shield during the triple threat match at Survivor Series between John Cena, Ryback, and CM Punk. You're going to be getting these watch-alongs and more like our Raw review, SmackDown reviews, the Wrestling is Cool podcast three days early, the currently ongoing Royal Rumble watch-alongs that we're doing, and the Undertaker WrestleMania match watch-alongs as well. Again, all of this is available exclusively on Patreon.com. I'll put the link in the description the link in the pinned comment come give it a try even for just one month because i'm confident that you're going to fall in love with it this is all content that just never gets uploaded to youtube because we just simply can't if you're already a patron thank you so much for your support it's the reason why i'm able to do this as much as i do thank you very much and back to the video i think that zelina vega needed that win she's put in so much work while she has been in the wwe and has had such memorable moments like when she fought rhea ripley at backlash in puerto rico so i think that she deserved to be the first women's intercontinental champ. If I'm being honest with you, there is no one in that women's intercontinental championship tournament bracket that quote deserves to be the women's intercontinental champion. Let me explain. When I look at the United States championship bracket, that is a bracket full of star power. That is a bracket where the winner will elevate the United States championship on Monday night. Raw, it feels like the opposite. It feels like the championship, whoever becomes champion, that championship is going to elevate whoever wins it. And that's the complete opposite opposite of what they're doing on Friday Night SmackDown, and I don't think that that's the best way to go about it. When I look at the field on Monday Night Raw for this tournament, most of them are in tag teams, just haven't been featured as single stars, or have just been off of television for seemingly months, and all of a sudden, we're supposed to believe that all of these competitors are credible inaugural mid-card champions. I have a hard time believing the Raw roster, but I don't for SmackDown. So, look, if it's, if it's a saving grace, if it's a silver lining for you, I feel like Nobody, frankly, is this instant, like, deserve to win the Intercontinental Championship. Rollins' promo reminded me a little of CM Punk and the MJF feud, where MJF talked about his, quote, relationship with CM Punk. I like that they're bringing up a lot of stuff from the past. This has big match feeling and is years in the making. Yeah, but I don't think that this was the best way to advance their feud. Frankly, I don't think that this episode of Raw needed CM Punk or Seth Rollins. I don't think that either of their segments really did a great job at advancing the reason as to why these guys hate each other. Think about it for a second. What was Seth Rollins' reasoning that Seth, that CM Punk didn't text him back in 2014? Boo-hoo. You're a grown-ass man, a grown-ass adult, and you're crying because another grown-ass man didn't text you back? What was reason number two, that he's back for money? What, what, what are we all here for? Charity? Seth, you're getting paid too. I never understood demonizing people because they're there to do something to get paid for. That also just doesn't work for me. 
And the other reasons was that CM Punk is mean and a bad guy. Newsflash, Seth, that's the reason why people like CM Punk in the first place. The only credible point that Seth Rollins brought up in this promo was that CM Punk badmouth and bashed the WWE when he left. He tried to destroy it. That's a really interesting angle for them to take. I just don't think that WWE has the balls to bring up the stuff that CM Punk actually did outside the WWE when he was bashing the WWE. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the New Day has a lot more heat than Dom. They just better push Kofi and Xavier to the moon with this heat. So I agree and disagree. I don't think that this is the same type of heat. I think that it's better. The Dominic Mysterio heat is, at the end of the day, fake. And think about this for a second. It's fake just because it's part of the crowd performance. You are expected to boo Dominic Mysterio. It's a meme at this point to boo Dominic Mysterio. It's up there with the what chants and singing along to Seth Rollins' theme. That is not the case with the New Day. The boos that the New Day were getting were just genuine anger and hatred from fans. And that's real heat. Meanwhile, Dominic Mysterio's to a degree is memes and kind of manufactured. This is where Kofi and Xavier went after getting booed out of the arena. The New Day getting the Dirty Dom level heat in 2024 was not on my bingo card. I also was never expecting Super Weenie Hut Juniors from the SpongeBob movie to ever be featured in one of my YouTube videos, but here you go. Imagine if Dom costs Finn the title at main event and then takes Liv and Raquel and goes to SmackDown. I am imagining it and I love it. I hope that that's the route that they go. I hope that Dominic Mysterio emerges as like this puppet master that's been commandeering the Judgment Day this entire time and is ready to steal the Judgment Day from right under uh, Finn Balor at Saturday night's main event. I feel like that's the way to go. I love this style of booking. Gunther should stack pin Priest and Balor at Saturday night's main event. That'd be cool. It would definitely bring back the unstoppable aura of Gunther as the ring general, but I don't think that that's going to happen. I think he's going to get another undeserved win and they're gonna continue to tell the story of Gunther, the undeserving ring general, unfortunately. Shout out to Liv and Dakota for putting on an incredible match. Liv's improvement has been spectacular. Dude, yes, and thank goodness that Liv Morgan is now having matches that actually help elevate the women's division. I was never expecting Dakota Kai to win this, but just Dakota Kai being in the ring with the women's world champion, having a competitive match helps elevate Dakota Kai, and then in turn helps elevate the women's division. This is something that they've not been doing with the women's world title seemingly for the past 12 months. This is good for Dakota, this is good for the women's world title, and this is good for Liv Morgan as well, because it showcases her outside of the feud that we've come to just know her for, which is the Rhea Ripley feud. So you're telling me that Sammy can apologize to Seth, but Roman still can't apologize to Jay? This is your weekly reminder that Roman Reigns still has not apologized, and I will remind you every single week, he needs to apologize. This would be the perfect main event for the first Raw on Netflix. Bro, if it is Punk, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns versus the trio of hatred in Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins, that would actually be monumental. That's almost too big to be on an, uh, on an episode of Raw. Even if it is the first episode of Raw on Netflix, this would be insane. How it feels whenever they show Finn in his tag team championship. Honestly, The Rock's fake ass, dumb ass people's championship is more prestigious than the tag titles right now. This match was actually good. They have amazing chemistry. So glad that somebody pointed this out. Not enough people wrote in about the match between Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez. That Anything Goes match was a lot of fun. I just hate that they didn't get enough time. But in terms of chemistry, Chemistry. We all knew that they had good chemistry. If you go back to their feud from 2023, they had pretty solid matches time after time after time. And I'm glad that Raquel got to main event. And I'm glad that we finally got uh, Rhea Ripley once again on a raw match in a singles match because it's been forever since we've gotten one seemingly. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Hot Takes. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Be good people. Get out of here.